Professor Dave and Chegg here, we've learned about various ways to look at the change in enthalpy for a particular reaction, including direct measurement through calorimetry or algebraic manipulation with Hess's law. Let's learn one more method for calculating the change in enthalpy for a reaction, and this involves using enthalpy of formation data. Let's go ahead and see exactly what this means. Enthalpy of formation, also called heat of formation, is a value that tells us the energy associated with the formation of one mole of a compound from its respective elements in their most stable states and under standard conditions. It will be symbolized as delta H with an F subscript for formation, and the degree symbol superscript signifies standard conditions. Enthalpy of formation data is very useful information because it is kind of like knowing the amount of chemical energy contained in a compound, which we can use to calculate the energy change for any reaction without having to actually perform the experiment. This is useful for finding out information for reactions that might be impractical or dangerous to carry out in the laboratory, or reactions for which we might have difficulty making measurements. For example, carbon dioxide is made of carbon and oxygen. In order to form one mole of carbon dioxide, we would need one mole of carbon atoms and one mole of oxygen molecules. The carbon is assumed to be graphite rather than coal or diamond, and the oxygen is O2 rather than O3, as these are the most stable states of these elements, and we assume standard conditions, which means room temperature and atmospheric pressure. If this reaction were to occur with the quantities and conditions specified, the change in enthalpy associated with it would be negative 393.5 kilojoules. This is exothermic, meaning the formation of carbon dioxide from its elements is energetically favorable. Looking at another example, in order to form one mole of nitrogen dioxide, we would need a half a mole of nitrogen molecules and one mole of oxygen molecules. We need to use the one half for nitrogen because we need the correct stoichiometric amounts to specifically make only one mole of the compound in question, in this case nitrogen dioxide, even if that results in fractional coefficients. The change in enthalpy associated with this reaction would be 33 kilojoules, so formation of NO2 from its elements is not energetically favorable. If we want to write a heat of formation reaction equation for a compound like ethanol, we just have to break it down into each element, in this case carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen, and use the correct coefficients to result in one mole of the compound. For ethanol, that would be two moles of carbon graphite to give the two carbon atoms, three moles of hydrogen to give the six hydrogen atoms, and a half a mole of oxygen to give the one oxygen atom. Now that we are clear on what enthalpy of formation means, let's learn about how to use this data. We have tabulated enthalpies of formation for a wide variety of substances, and we can do simple calculations using this tabulated data to discern the change in enthalpy for a particular reaction. All we have to do is use this equation, whereby change in enthalpy can be calculated by finding the sum of the enthalpies of formation for all the products with respect to their stoichiometric coefficients, and subtracting from that the sum of the enthalpies of formation for all the reactants with respect to their stoichiometric coefficients. Don't be scared of this uppercase sigma. It just means to find the sum or to add everything up. So we just get this data from a table of given information and plug it in where it goes, making sure to multiply it by a stoichiometric coefficient if necessary. Take for example the combustion of methane. We can identify methane gas, oxygen gas, carbon dioxide gas, and water vapor. The enthalpies of formation for these substances are as follows. Notice that oxygen does not have a heat of formation, as it is an element in the standard state, so there's nothing to form, so that one will be zero. Now we take the products first, so we plug in our value for CO2, as well as our value for water vapor, making sure to multiply that one by 2, since it has a coefficient of 2 in the balanced equation. Let's place all of that in brackets. Then let's list the reactants. We have methane, and then the zero for oxygen, times two, which will still be zero, but let's write it out just to be thorough. Let's place all of that in brackets as well, and subtract this whole second term from this first term. This part is very important, because simple arithmetic errors and mistakes when inputting these numbers into a calculator is a very common source of error on this type of question. You can either simplify each term and subtract, or type it all in your calculator using parentheses and brackets correctly. Either way, we do the math and we get negative 887 kilojoules per mole as an answer, a strongly exothermic value to match this combustion reaction. In summary, enthalpies of formation represent the enthalpy change associated with the formation of one mole of a substance 
from its respective elements in their most stable states and under standard conditions. And we can use this data to calculate the change in enthalpy for a reaction without having to physically perform the reaction. Professor Dave Furchegg, see you next time.